Good morning, my name is Lewis with Swag Ministries. Just wanted to uh, say I hope everyone's going to have a blessed day and a blessed prosperous day today. I want to talk to y'all about why it is important to come to Jesus. First of all, we need salvation. We are all sinners. God said, no one is worthy, no, not one. We are all as filthy rags. Do you know what that means? That means we're all dirty. God said nothing unclean can enter the kingdom of heaven. We gotta be clean. How do we get clean? How do we get clean from all our sins, make, made white as snow? Jesus, already did that at the cross. Jesus did all of that for us at the cross when he died and he shed his blood so that we can be forgiven. He was the ransom for mankind. He was the lamb slain, the last lamb slain, the ultimate sacrifice that God put on him to um, take us all away into the into the new Jerusalem when it comes for those walking in Christ. You know what I'm saying? He's the propitiation for us and so in order to enter the kingdom of heaven, this is what God said. Those that know it, my son Jesus, shall have everlasting life. And those that know it not of my son, or those that know it not, my son, are already condemned. <clears throat> he didn't say condemned or condemned. They are already condemned. So you could be walking and living in this world. You're already condemned. You're, you're like, you know, when you walk past a building and it's got a sign on it, condemned. That building was condemned because that building was destroyed on the inside. It was gutted. It was like no good. It was like an eyesore. It was condemned. Right? So you'll be just like that building. You walk around with a sign on your chest. Condemned. You'll be condemned. You'll be walking and living in darkness because you rejected Jesus. But let me tell you something. When you reject Jesus, you reject your salvation. When you reject Jesus, you reject your life. When you reject Jesus, you reject your freedom because he gives us all of that and then some. You heard me? So... When God answer, when God asks, or when God puts a calling on your life, answer that call, because he might not call on you no more. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to end up with a reprobate mind. And then uh, when Jesus comes, he's going to say to you, depart from me, I never knew you. You're workers of lawlessness. Those are the worst words you want to hear when Jesus comes. What you want to hear, my, my, my friends, is job well done, my humble and faithful servant. That's what you want to hear. That means you're selected, you're chosen, you're elected, you know what I'm saying? And with Jesus, we are always protected, never neglected. These vessels he has selected, and we do his will as requested. You feel me? And that's, that's, that's just the bottom line right there. You know what I'm saying? Because once you, once you belong to the kingdom of God, you're in the kingdom of God, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. There's two books. There's the Book of Life, and there's the Lamb's Book of Life. You want to be in the Lamb's Book of Life because the Book of Life on this side on the left is just the names of everybody in the world. That's right. God knows everybody in the world and your names are in the book of life. A lot of people in that in that book of life are going to hell. 
You know what I'm saying? Because those are the ones that are living in sin, living in darkness. You know, those are the ones that rejected Jesus. But the Lamb's Book of Life is your guaranteed spot in the heavenly nation. And you won't have to face the decimation that's coming to this wicked nation through God's proclamation that this world is in dire eradication. Amen? And we are all in dire cessation because they refuse their salvation. So get right with Christ today and receive his justification and he'll take you with him to his heavenly nation, New Jerusalem. Amen? The New Jerusalem. And you can't go to heaven just by your works. For we are saved by grace through faith, not of our own works, so that no man may boast. It doesn't matter how much work you do and good works you do in this in this world. It doesn't matter how much you give, how much you help the homeless, how much you give to charity. Uh, none of that matters. You can't do anything. You can't do anything except believe in Jesus Christ and repent. Believe in Jesus, because when you believe, you shall receive. Am I right about it? Jesus said, knock, and the door will be opened to you. Ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. You know what I'm saying? So, there's nothing that you can do. You can't make yourself righteous. You can't make yourself clean. You can't call yourself worthy. You can't because we're not worthy until we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So um, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. What does this tell me? This tells me that there are no other doors to Jesus. There's no back door. There's only one way to know God the Father, and there's only one way to be in heaven eternally with Christ Jesus. It's through Jesus, the mediator, the propitiator, the propitiation for all of our sins. He's the mediator between us, which is man, Mankind and God, there is no other way. No Muhammad, no Gandhi, no Virgin Mary. Oh, y'all Catholics, y'all in big trouble. You need to listen to this. There are uh, uh, no statues. Uh, you can't kiss uh, the statues' feet. Pray to the statues. Pray to the Virgin Mary. There's no purgatory. There's no way in between heaven. It's either here, heaven, or hell. Make your choice today. It's either here, heaven, or hell. You know what I'm saying? So you, not, you gotta make your choice. There's only uh, a little bit of time left before Jesus comes because the signs are here. I'm gonna ask y'all something. I'm gonna ask y'all something for those that don't... Uh, that don't know what's in scriptures. If you have a Bible, open your Bible to Revelations. If you don't have a Bible, go out and buy one. Or borrow one from a friend. I know you have friends who have Bibles, right? Just go to Revelations and start at the beginning and you'll see that most of the stuff that's in Revelations at the beginning, maybe till about chapter 6, chapter 7, has already happened. Has already happened. You see, Revelations is just a, a prophecy of what's happening and what is to come. What's happening and what is to come. And it's God's word. And it's true. You know what I'm saying? Bible stands for 
basic instructions before leaving Earth. Basic instructions before leaving Earth. You feel me? That's what the Bible stands for. And gospel stands for God's only Son provides eternal life. God's only Son provides eternal life. And grace, oh, what is grace? God's riches at Christ's expense. Hmm? God's riches at Christ's expense. Okay, enough with the jibber-jabber about that. Okay? So we established that we can't be saved by ourselves. We established that we are not righteous by ourselves. We established that we can't do all these good works in the world and still expect to go to heaven. Because Jesus said, many will come to me in my name. Many will come in my name and will say, Lord, have we not baptized in your name? Lord, have we not healed in your name? And what did, what did the Lord say? The Lord said, I never knew you because they were trying to do good works for their own sake, for their name. You know what I'm saying? Because if you go out and say, you are healed, that's like saying, I'm hungry. You know what I'm saying? That's just, those are just words. But when you're walking in Christ and I see, I hear you in Jesus' mighty name. You are healed in Jesus' name. My pain go, sickness go, new ligaments, all, all um, schemes of the devil depart. You are healed in the mighty name of Jesus. You have to say the mighty name of Jesus. Well, not mighty name. In Jesus' name, you have to do everything in Jesus' name. You know what I'm saying? And you have to believe. You have to believe. Because faith, faith is a sustenance of things unseen. Amen? So, um, yeah, uh, we established all these things so far. And what what con what is the conclusion here? The conclusion is we need Jesus because Jesus said, Without me, you are nothing. Do you know what that means? Without me, you are nothing. You could have the biggest bank account in the world. You could have mansions and cars. You could have everything at your disposal. You could be filthy rich. But guess what? That don't mean nothing to the Lord. That means nothing to the Lord. Because, he said, without me, you are nothing. You're still nothing, no matter how much you have or who you are in, in this world. You know what I'm saying? You are still nothing. You know why? Because you can't take none of those things with you to heaven. What are you going to say? Lord, when I had all this money, I was a big, powerful man in the world. That means nothing to Jesus. That means nothing to Jesus. And if you don't know Jesus, God is going to hide his face from you like this. He's not going to hear your prayers if you do pray at all. He's not going to answer your prayers because you don't know Jesus. See, it all, everything I'm telling you, all roads lead back to Jesus. No matter what road you take, this road, that road, all roads lead to Jesus. You got to go through Jesus, you know what I'm saying? Why it is the road to the world, but narrow is the road to heaven. Hmm? I chose that narrow road because Jesus already showed me what this world is, where, what this world is like. That's why I chose the narrow road, and I'm walking that narrow road. 
and I'm not ever, ever going to stop until Jesus comes. And when I see Jesus face to face, I'm going to give him a warm embrace, and he's going to take me with him to that heavenly place, because it is in him that I believe, and it is only him and from him that I receive, for he took away all my sins, he took away all of my sorrow, he gave me a better tomorrow, with him, without him I am nothing, an empty being, he opened my eyes and showed me the mistakes I was making, he snatched me from that evil grasp of Satan, amen, amen, everything is Jesus, nothing but Jesus, so I want you to make a decision today to give your life to Jesus because today could be your day of salvation, you know what I'm saying, brothers and sisters, we don't have that much time, look at how evil this world is right now, look at media, look at what's happening to, to, to celebrities, look at what's happening to Regular people in the world living in darkness, you know what I'm saying? They, they, are, they embrace the darkness. They're going to have darkness in their life. You know what I'm saying? They go after the lust of their flesh, you know, and God is going to give them a reprobate mind, and they still have to face judgment. Everybody has to face judgment on judgment day. We will all be judged, the good and the bad. You know what I'm saying? The good and the bad. Everybody is going to be judged. You know what I'm saying? So consider this world like a prison. We are all in a prison. This world is a big prison, and we are all on death. Whoa. But Jesus will take that condemned sign off of your chest. You know what I'm saying? He'll take that condemned sign off of your chest and throw it back to the evil one. And he'll tell God the Father in heaven, He is mine. She is mine. Amen. Just like that man sitting in the courtroom and he's about to be sentenced to death for everything that he's done in this in his life. And the judge is sitting in front of him, the judge, God the Father, and he's about to sentence him to death and he's got the gavel in his hand. He's about to slam it down and sentence him to death and then boom! Jesus walks right through the past. Jesus busts the door down and says, free him, release this man. I have paid for all of his sins. And the judge looks at his son and says, Hmm, not guilty. You want to be declared not guilty today? Come to God. Come to Jesus and be declared not guilty. You'll be made white as snow, clean. And Jesus said he will take all of your sins and throw them into the depths of the sea and he said I will remember them no more you will be a new creation saved from the decimation of this wicked nation you heard I behoove you come to Jesus while you still have time while your mouth can still sing him praises while your ears can still hear the gospel and while your knees can still bend and you can pray Amen. Don't wait until your last day. Amen. Amen. Love you all.